Thanks for stopping by to check out yet another episode of Vintage Audio Review. In this episode, you guessed it, I'm going to talk about this beautiful Macintosh MC240 stereo power amplifier. Macintosh sold the MC240 between the years 1960 to 1969, and in 1960, its price was listed at $288, which would be about $2,900 today. Its power output was 40 watts per channel into an 8 ohm load at not more than 0.5% THD. It does use four 6L6 output tubes and it weighs in at a whopping 56 pounds. My buddy Richard brought me this MC240 to check out because he thought it sounded bad. The first thing I did was to pull each tube and test it on my tube tester. The tubes all measured good, however I did find several tubes in the wrong sockets. I got them in the right sockets and hooked it up to my audio analyzer and I noticed that the right channel had a few issues that the left channel did not. So I set it up on the bench and found a few bad capacitors and I will show you the capacitors that I found that were bad where they were in the schematic a little while later in this video. Right now I am going to swap lenses and zoom in on some of the uh, controls on this piece of audio art. I'm going to call this the business end of the MC240 and starting on the left we have our speaker terminal and we do have terminals for 16 ohm, 8 ohm, 4 ohm and then of course this is your common. Now if you wanted to use this as a mono block you would just use the left side terminals and you would follow the impedance right here. This first one would be 8 and then 4 and then possibly 2 ohms. So that would be for a mono connection. There's also some outputs over here for preamp power. There's, I don't really know much about those. Uh, I don't, from what I gather, they were not used very often. We do have a balance control over here, and that would be for your stereo inputs that are here. That's the way that this amplifier was tested. When you want to use it in the stereo mode, you would move the switch over there. Now, it has something called a twin inputs, left and right, and if you move this switch over to here, you have two gain controls, these two guys here, and they control the gain for the amplifier, and they basically control each channel's gain. The main purpose of that was if you were going to buy amp your speaker and wanted to power each driver separately, in which case you're gonna need another MC240 as well for the other channel. Uh, if you wanna use this as a mono block, your input is right here. You throw the switch over to that, and then you have your gain control right here for using it as a mono amplifier. I powered on the MC240. I'm not sure how well you're gonna see the glow of the tubes here under my skylight, but it is powered on and I just thought I would show the tubes that it uses. We have a 12AX7, 12AU7, 12BH7, 12AX7, 12AU7, 12BH7, and another 12AX7. And these four guys are all 6L6 GCs. So this Macintosh Performance Certified sticker was placed on this particular MC240 on May 20th, 1976. So here is one side of the MC240 that actually lists its specifications, which is kind of cool. So here is kind of an aerial view of the MC240, which shows the output transformers as well as the main power transformer. So this is the inside of the Macintosh MC240 with the bottom plate cover removed. I kind of just wanted to show a little bit what it looks like. These are our tube sockets right here and right down here. The controls are over in this area. There's a couple of potentiometers and there is the twin amp mono stereo switch right here. And those are all cleaned and lubed. There is a, uh, your mainline fuse there, but there is a secondary fuse underneath here where this green is. Here are the main filter caps right here, and this cap right here replaced one that was inside here. This, this can here actually has two capacitors in it, and one of them was replaced with this guy at some point in time. 
the capacitors I replaced were underneath this board here and it was this guy right here and this guy right here and the third one I replaced was down here I think you might be able to see it underneath this board and this is like a rectifier filter board as well so that's the inside of the MC240 I just wanted to show where in the schematic the capacitors were that I replaced and they would be the ones highlighted in yellow which are C5, C6, and C7. Here we have the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz for the MC240 putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohms for both channels. The THD looks pretty good at less than 0.2% for both channels and the SNR is above 80 dB so that's pretty good. We won't talk about the THD plus noise. It's right around 60 dB. And one other thing to note is that the gain is about 16.5 dB, which is a bit lower than what I am used to seeing with some of the other solid state amps that I have tested. Here we have the frequency response plot for the MC240. It's putting out 5 watts into 8 ohms. And we can tell that for the left channel, it's down about half a dB at 20 kilohertz. And for the right channel, it's going to be very similar. Also, the channel balance is within just uh, maybe a tenth of a dB or slightly over that between the two channels. So it actually looks pretty good. We are looking at an expanded scale. So that's why you're seeing those little like noise glitches. And here we have the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with the MC240 putting out 40 watts into 8 ohms or slightly over 40 watts into 8 ohms. And we can see that it is meeting its better than 0.5% THD requirement. The SNR is varying from 66 to 74 dB and the THD plus noise is between 46 and 53 dB. So that's not stellar, but... This is a pretty darn old amp. Here we have the multi-tone test results of the MC240, and it's showing between 11 and 12 bits of distortion-free range, which is about average for the old amps that I've tested. Here we have a plot showing the THD versus frequency for a few different power levels for the MC240 into 8 ohms. And you can see that with the exception of the very low end of the band, maybe below about 40 hertz or 30 hertz, it is basically meeting the 0.5% or less THD. Here is the crosstalk between the left and right channels. In this case, a signal is applied to the left channel and the right channel input is terminated. And we are looking at the amount of leakage of the left channel into the right channel. You would want that number to be as negative as possible. In this case, with the exception of the 60 hertz feed through point, we are better than, I would say, 45 dB across the band. There is no specification for the crosstalk, but this is just what was measured. Here is a plot of the output impedance of the MC240. And for this measurement, I use the 8 ohm impedance tap of the MC240. And the way the measurement is done is you start off with an 8 ohm load. It does some measurements, and then it asks you to hook up a 4 ohm load. Now, to be fair, I did not hook the 4 ohm load up to the 4 ohm tap on the MC240, so I really don't know how accurate this is, but be that as it may, it gives a damping factor of a bit over 6. Typically, you would like to have that at least 10, so take it for what it's worth. I was able to do some research, and based on this unit serial number, it was made in 1961, which makes it 61 years old, and I think it did a pretty good job of meeting its specifications from nearly 61 years ago. In all fairness, when I did the output impedance test, I did not hook the 4 ohm load up to the 4 ohm taps. I kept the 4 ohm load hooked up to the 8 ohm taps, and most likely that would have made a difference. I also did not test this into a 4 ohm load, nor did I test it as a monoblock, just 
because of time constraints. I first took the MC240 up to my Klipsch La Scala speakers and terminated the inputs into 50 ohm loads, basically a short. And there was some hum, but it was very low level and it didn't detract at all. And to be honest, I often hear hum in speakers when just the amplifier is sitting there. I then hooked it up to my Carver CT7 tuner preamp and played a bunch of music. And the combination of this MC240 and my Klipsch La Scala's was really, really good. It, it just sounded, I, I don't know if amazing is the, quite the word, I don't know how you spec amazing, but it had a really nice sound. Um, normally I run a Crown SA2 amplifier with my La Scala's and different preamp as well, but this combination of the Blue Scala's and this and the Carver was just really, really wonderful. I, I thought there was uh, enough bass and just, it just was, I don't know, transparent. I don't really know how you spec that. It just sounded good. That's kind of my thing. I, there's forward and, and uh, snappy. It, it sounded really good. <laughs> This is what I can say, uh, different than at least the, the Crown and other amplifiers that I've put in there. And it, it just did well. With those efficient La Scala's, you don't need the full 40 watts to generate SPLs uh, much more than 92 dB, which is very loud. It's much louder than I'm going to listen to almost 98% of the time. And it, it just cranked right along and it was just a pleasure to, uh, to, to listen to the music for a while with this amplifier. Uh, I'm really going to hate to give it back to Richard. That being said, I then um, hooked it up to the KEF speakers, the 107s back here, which are a 4 ohm speaker and it, it's a different speaker and it had a different sound. I, I, it sounded just fine. It didn't sound uh, magical uh, as it did with the La Scala's and so it, it definitely would not be the amplifier of choice for a speaker that's less efficient but for a, a nice efficient uh, horn speaker I think th this could work out really well for you if you're able to get one. Now I've seen them on eBay anywhere from $3,000 to $4,500 and obviously depends if they're refurbished or not, but it was a really uh, pleasant hour just listening to music on uh, on this with the La Scala's. A comment was made to me about the sound being better once the tubes had been on and opened up. Um, with the La Scala's, maybe it sounded a little bit better. It's really hard to quantify. I mean, to be honest, this thing started sounding good in 15 minutes. Uh, it, towards the, you know, 45 minutes later or so, I don't know if it sounded that much better. It would be really hard to, to, to tell that, but it just sounded nice. I, I really enjoyed the sound of, of this amplifier. And I'm hoping to get a little bit more uh, tube gear in to test every now and then, but uh, it's kind of the luck of the draw with me. Anyway, I thank you for watching. I'm sure there's going to be a comment or two uh, that people want to leave. And if you have not subscribed, please do so. If you like the video, please uh, click the like button. And until next time, have a great day or night.